So as Abuna mentioned, there's a new service that the church has started, and it's called Hidden Treasures. And if you haven't heard it before, the purpose of the service is that there are so many meanings and beautiful rites that the church has, and so many times we don't know all of the contemplations and the meanings behind all the hymns that we chant and behind all of the services that are in the church. So the church thought it good to start this service so that we can learn together all of the beauty that goes behind our church. And the way that the service happens is that um, on a regular schedule, there's a video that's published on a variety of social media platforms by the church. Um, and with the video also comes a booklet that, that the deacons are handing out. Um, and specifically during Lent, um, the, the service is gonna publish every week a new video on a new topic. And so with the video um, will also be the booklet that comes out. And every week we'll focus on a different aspect of Lent because we know that this time, this season of the church is one of the most holy and really the peak of our spirituality um, that we have. Specifically this week, the focus of this week uh, for the video and for the, the booklet is going to be on the gospel response. And so we thought it would be beneficial to also add a, a very quick live explanation before we say the hymn, which is going to be directly after this. So the hymn that you see on the screen behind me um, is the gospel response for the Lenten season, specifically for Saturdays and Sundays. If you saw the first two videos for the Lent series, the first one was on the weekend rites and the weekday rites. You find that the time of Lent is very unique because the rites in the church are different between the weekends and the weekdays. So this gospel response is specifically for the weekends. Um, and the, the, the response, the words for the response come straight from the Bible from Matthew chapter 6. So the Sermon on the Mount that we are probably familiar with was when our Lord taught us the Lord's Prayer. And if you look at the words in English, um, and I'm going to focus on the first paragraph just for the sake of time, but the first paragraph there should be words that are very familiar uh, to many of us. And so I'm only going to give two small facts about this hymn, and then um, I'll let you read the brochure and see the video when it comes out later today. But if you look at the words, it should be very familiar because it's our Father who art in heaven. But if you look at the, the content of the words that are only in this paragraph, you notice that it's only a few words of the entire Our Father prayer. And like we say so many times, this is not by accident. There are no accidents in the church. The reason why there's only these three lines of Our Father and not the rest of the words of our Lord's Prayer is because the church wants us to focus in this hymn on the glory of God. So instead of saying, give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses. The words that are in this hymn are, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, for yours is the glory. So the focus of the hymn is on the glory of the Lord. And then the second part that I want to talk about is the spirituality of the hymn. So after the gospel, we hear the word of the Lord, and then we begin the liturgy of the believers, which is the part of the liturgy that concludes our journey to the Eucharist. And so the tune of this hymn after the gospel is very encouraging. You find that the hymn inc increases in its tune, and you see that it crescendos all the way up until you see the last word on the fourth line, modus e. And that word translated into English means your kingdom come. It is that point of the hymn that has the highest tune. And again, the reason for that is because the purpose of us being here today the purpose of this time of prayer and fasting is we're asking for God's kingdom to come into us. And so you see that the hymn reaches its climax at that word, and the tune reaches its highest point in the entire uh, refrain. And so with that, I'm going to stop there, and um, we'll continue with the prayer now, beginning with the hymn, Jepenyot.